what is the interface between the, the founder and the new operating guy who comes in? Are there expectations that are kind of unsaid or not said, or what do you wish would happen to make that better? Or, I mean, implicitly, that's a loaded sure. question on purpose. Uh, Thanks. Jeez. Yeah. Um, uh, open it up to the class. Sure. I, I would say, again, I've... I've um, with the exception of one founder, I've, I've got great relationships with many founders. I've worked alongside three or four. Um, what I'd say, first of all, is you need a mature relationship, and you need to recognize there's different life experiences, skills, orientation, and if you can do it right, they ought to complement and not compete. Now, that requires uh, emotional maturity on the operating person that says, oh, everything here was bad, I need to fix it, versus saying, boy, this is amazing. I can see a lot of ways it can be better. Are there sacred cows? Are there some other things that, that are very important to you as founder? Oftentimes, founders remain on the board, and that still maintains a, an important relationship. On the case of the founder, many founders, it's, it's your child. You can't imagine seeing it other than how you see it. So it requires some emotional maturity from the founder to uh, develop that working relationship with the operator. In the best case, uh, you have a, a, a board that is having open dialogue about this. You have a founder that really cares most about the company being successful. And you have an operator that, that is able to leverage their skills but, but is respectful and appreciative of the fact they, they wouldn't have given birth to this wonderful thing called this new company, with creating jobs and opportunities for a lot of other people. So I, I, it, there's a lot of, uh, I, one of the presentations, and I know a few of the individuals that have characterized this as Shakespeare and Hamlet and others, and, there's plenty of drama in Silicon Valley about uh, startups and founders being moved out and all that stuff. I would, I would assert that it doesn't have to be that difficult. And uh, if you're thinking about starting up a company, think about what it evolves and imagine, imagine success. I, I do that personally. I visualize the outcome I want, whether it's three years, five years. And, and then I imagine where my skills won't fit anymore. And I personally don't want to run a $5 billion company. It's, it's too far away from customers and employees and the magic of innovation for me to, to get really excited about that. So for me to think about this business, if I'm here five more years and we're billions in revenue, it's less interesting for me and I wouldn't be as passionate. So I have to start thinking about you know, either that or the board does it for me. When would be the right time for me to be thinking about somebody else that loves running a, a $2 billion company taking it to five because the work you do is different? I think it's the same thing for each of you that are starting companies. And if they're virtual, it may be different. It, you may not have a successor, uh, an operator. You may be able to rely on the ecosystem around you and so that some of the other people that in virtual space can complement you know, what your skills and experiences are. But, but I, just, I believe life, life is too short, and, uh, and you ought to have open, honest discussions. And if, if the operator is coming into a situation where the founder doesn't agree and the board doesn't agree, then I'd say that's not a situation the operating type would you'd say, I'm not sure this is the right thing for me. I personally don't like to drop into uh, situations like that.